Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. We haven't been in Sapporo for more than 10 minutes and it already feels completely different than all the other places that we've been in in Japan. The fall colors, the briskness of the air, it is, it's cold. We can't wait to spend the next 48 hours here. It's such a cool city already. On the surface so far, Sapporo feels like just a very large, big city. Japan's fifth largest city. And it has all the amenities, it has all the features of a big city like Lawson's, one right here, one back there, and all the sky rises and beautiful neon lights and of course all the good food. But it's got a laid back feeling and, and I really like that. We're gonna start off our time in Sapporo with a local specialty of miso ramen. So the type of ramen that we've had throughout the rest of our time here in Japan has all been tonkatsu ramen, which means like pork broth or with, made with pork bone. But the kind that we're trying tonight actually takes a tonkatsu base and I guess that they also use miso paste to like mix in with it to give it like a silkier, almost like thicker texture to it. It's supposed to be really delicious. It's a specialty that was literally invented here in Hokkaido, so I'm excited. I also don't want to be let down because, you know, my heart is very much in the tonkatsu ramen camp. Alright, we're here at Ramen Shingen. It's like 4 p.m. right now and this place is totally stocked full. There's a line out front. It smells so good. I hope we get a seat. Still, we're like, you know, 20 people behind in line. It's worth the wait, I hope, probably, maybe. Mm. Alright, we, we made it. Basically as soon as we sat down we had to order like right away even though we're like 10 people behind. Uh, we're next. So cool. <laughs> Holy cow, that's so good. This broth is so like silky and milky. Sorry for the rhyme there. It's just so much creamier. The miso and the spice just like work together. It's an entirely different thing. I've never, I've never had anything like this in my life. The ramen is perfectly cooked. It's like soft but chewy. And the broth is amazing. It's like it's been stewing for hundreds of years. Oh, that was good. Oh, that was so good. So about two bites into that meal, I realized just how ignorant about ramen I had been. I thought forever that like tonkatsu was the only one, you know, like the one true ramen, but man was I wrong. <laughs> So I don't know what I expected when we came to Sapporo, but it definitely wasn't this. It's so busy, there's so many bright lights, there's so many people walking around, there's so much energy. I guess I just assumed that it was gonna be like a sleepy town that's like way up north that not a lot of people go to, but man, it's, it's awesome. Now we're making our way to the TV tower so we can get kind of a view over all of Sapporo at night. I think it'll be awesome. What? Dessert? Okay, this place is called Kinatoya Bake. Everything they have looks delicious. Uh, this one, soft and pushy, and it's like really solid crust underneath it. This is a weaponized dessert. I could like throw this at someone and they would be like, ugh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's me. Speechless. This egg cheese tart thing had me at a total loss for words, which many of you know is really, really hard to do. It was that good. I couldn't figure it out. How did they manage to make that tart part so crunchy but keep the cheese part so soft and creamy? That's so good. I searched the internet far and wide until I looked on Skillshare. I found hundreds of courses on baking desserts, including video recipes for exactly this one. Someday if we get access to an oven, I'll make it. Skillshare isn't just for baking lessons either. It's an online learning community with loads of courses on just about any subject you can think of. Editing, finance, blacksmithing, Pokemon, nature survival, remote controlled airplanes, 3D modeling, rope map making, even our own course on travel hacking. Whatever you're into, there's an expert course on there to show you the ropes, sometimes literally. The first 1,000 people that use the link in the description below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare and get access to our course, as well as all of the thousands of other courses. You gotta try this one. This is unlike any of the other ones we've had because the crust is actually crunchy. It's almost like a pie crust, but thick, and it's really good. And the inside is soft, fluffy, almost like a cheesecake texture. I think we'll be back. Their soft serve is supposed to be also really good, and apparently Hokkaido is known for their ice cream. It's no 
November, so it gets like super dark here and our hotel has an onsen, so. breakfast that isn't Family Mart, Lawson's, or Yoshinoya. Yeah, we've basically eaten one of those three things every single day. We did find one place and I'm really excited about it. Sapporo has this really awesome above ground tram system that just goes in a loop and it supposedly takes you to all the places that you want to go and it only costs 200 yen. That's like a dollar fifty, maybe a dollar. I love this place already. It says broken English spoken perfectly. My kind of place. Sweet sandwiches, savory, cold and hot sandwiches. So many options. I want to find a place like that everywhere we go. The owner is there. They make the sandwiches. They're just so friendly and welcoming. I can't wait to try their sandwiches. So right next to the sandwich shop is this absolutely beautiful park. Fall colors are in bloom and we're just searching for the perfect place to eat our sandwich. The red, the orange, the yellow, crunchy leaves. We haven't been in crunchy leaves weather in a really long time. To truly enjoy the sandwich experience, I'm gonna need a drink. Do you think I'll be able to find a vending machine anywhere? I walked probably 15 steps. Did you know there's one vending machine for every 23 people that live in Japan? So many, that's incredible. I love it. Look at how like melty and cheesy that is. Oh boy. Yes, please. So the bread is super soft, like super soft. As soon as you bite into it, you get hit immediately with this like garlic cheese mixture. It almost has this pizza doughy chewiness to it, but crispiness on the outside. And the cheese is, is super nice and savory. It's got like herby flavors. You can tell he he's really good at what he does and he put a lot of love into these sandwiches. This is the type of place that makes you want to order everything off the menu. You know, I wish we could have ordered more sandwiches, but we have to save our stomachs for tonight's main event. This was the Hokkaido, the Sapporo I was imagining. The colors are so vibrant, so beautiful. And I know some people say, ah, oh, you shouldn't come in November. It's kind of right before it gets really wintry, but I think it's stunning. Autumn here is beautiful. I do want to come back when it snows, but wow, the colors are amazing. Sapporo is so cool because we've got all the restaurants, all the markets, beautiful parks and nature, shrines everywhere. And just if you look down these narrow streets, you just see, bam, mountains. Did he get it? Oh, he didn't get it. Can we try? We gotta try. And literally every single time that we go anywhere that has these crane games, she's in and she's like, give me some money, I wanna go play. Ah, I have to give me some money. It's honestly becoming a problem. I think we've spent like $40 so far since we made it to Japan just on crane games. You see there's a Kanage red one. Oh, what? <laughs> we must win it. There goes 600 yen, 500 yen. We are in front of Sapporo's, one of Sapporo's most famous attractions. It's a big clock tower. Here it is. Look at it. Yes, it's a clock tower, but there's something really fun about the fact that there's a platform specifically for people to stand up and take a photo with it. And everyone else is so excited, so that automatically gets us excited. And now for the main event. 
what? <laughs> we are at the Sapporo Beer Gardens right in front of the Sapporo Beer Factory. And they have all-you-can-eat Mongolian barbecue and all-you-can-drink Sapporo beer. Also, can we just talk about how beautiful it is here? I mean, I feel like I'm at an Ivy League school right now. The red brick, the autumn leaves falling down. Oh, I'm so excited. I mean, we don't normally do these all-you-can-eat, but I'm excited because this is not at all what I was expecting. It smells it so like good. As soon as we walked upstairs, the smoke started to fill the air and it just smells amazing. Like grilled meats. That room looks entirely covered with smoke. given these plastic bags and instructed to put all our belongings in there so it doesn't smell. That's really thoughtful. This is a big bag. Okay, so what they have is they just have like a drink menu and a beer is like 1100, right? And then they also have wines and highballs and all sorts of other things you can get. But the thing that we're here for is this. And this is the Nomi Hodai or all you can eat and all you can drink. I think that that's what it translates to. You get 120 minutes to eat and drink as much as you possibly can. And you get to grill it right in front of you. Okay, I'm ready now. Ready! To answer the question that I'm sure you've been wondering the whole time since we got here, yes, the in-house beer is noticeably better. Like the Sapporo 5 Star that they have here is noticeably better than just regular Sapporo. All right, so the first thing apparently that he just told us you gotta do, oh my god. I think it's just straight up pork fat. Oh. These things go on top, the veggies go around the outside. That's what they said. Okay, oh my god. So while we're waiting for the meat to cook here, would you mind just like going out there and hitting that subscribe button just right on the outside? It would mean a lot to us. First piece, they gave us some special sauce to dip it into. Ooh, I'm excited. I don't even know what this is, but... Mm, that is tasty. The sauce is sweet and savory. It's almost like a sweet and savory sauce. But I, the meat is very tender. Mm. Every table also comes with a salt and pepper blend. Let's try. Mm. I bet on here's got like a ton of different options, way more than just the beer. It's got the beer, all of these different, like between alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages, which is really exciting. I think I'm gonna try the porter. I think obviously the food is amazing and incredible, but of course, as always, the experience is always so much fun when you get to DIY it. And this, this place is so rowdy and ruckus. So this is, this is pretty fun. I know, I know we should just be eating meat and vegetables. It doesn't come with rice, but how can you not? It's like these perfect strips of fatty meat surrounded by, it's, it's just, oh, it's so perfect. I feel like we've already eaten the cost of entry already. Everything's so good. I don't know what to do with myself. There's a variety of kind of meats here. Chicken, more chicken, lamb. Really, really tasty and has good flavor. So I got something called the Yabisu Melon Sour. But they also have a non-alcoholic version. That's nice. It's not even that sour, it's like sweet. Just like a cantaloupe and a melon put in with... I don't even know what the alcohol is. You can't really taste it, which is kind of dangerous. But it's very tasty and refreshing. I got the half and half, which is their half stout, half like regular Sapporo. It's not for me. This means our time is halfway through. Losing count of how many rounds we've gone through, but had to get a refill of veggies for health.
still red wine. In my household, we always refrigerated our red wine. I don't know if that's what people do elsewhere or how the Italians do it or whatever, but Hokkaido does it and I'm a fan. Eight minutes left. Only eight minutes. Eight minutes. Eight minutes. Honestly, when we first got here, I was a little bit worried about how much time we were gonna have to like eat and drink and also film. <laughs> like two hours is it's a lot of time in uh, all you can eat, all you can drink land. It's almost a little bit too much. Oh no! <laughs> it's over. <laughs> the dream is over. The dream is over. Honestly, that's probably a good thing at this point. I don't know whether to feel proud or sad. <laughs> While this was a very expensive meal, I think it went like $80 total for the two of us which is by far one of the most expensive meals we've had on this trip and probably most trips one of the things that i feel grateful for is that i think we're starting to actually like let loose some of our purse strings and just enjoy places for what they are and enjoy places for what they have i feel like i've had like a thousand grams of protein since we got here. That to me feels really wonderful to be able to experience something that is very specific to this place. <sighs> Expensive, but really fun and really tasty. And we probably won't be eating breakfast tomorrow. Hi. I'm physically and emotionally exhausted. <sighs> Chilly. 44 minute walk back. <laughs> okay, I know we just had all you can eat barbecue and drinks and we're full to the moon but we can't leave Hokkaido without having Hokkaido sauce sir. Oh no what has happened? The literal representation of us after this barbecue. <laughs> just has to eat, it. eat it. Okay. Before it falls fully over. <laughs> there is no way. <laughs> you better hurry. Here, it turns out as I can see the <laughs> Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> It's falling over, so... Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's very creamy. It's very tasty. I had too much to eat today. Here you go. It's falling apart, right? This thing's definitely falling apart. I mean, it's staying up pretty good. It's just super delicious, super creamy vanilla ice cream. So good. I feel like we have to eat it faster before the entire thing just ends up on the floor. How does it compare to Wisconsin dairy ice cream? Ooh. Because Hokkaido, right? Yeah, I'm obviously biased, but as far as soft serve goes, this is about as good as it gets. <laughs> <laughs> 